A question I get asked all the time is this. Can magnesium, potassium, or vitamin C actually prevent atrial fibrillation? Let's break it down. Magnesium. Magnesium is essential for stabilizing the heart's electrical system. In hospitals, we often give IV magnesium to reduce arrhythmias after surgery. But does taking oral magnesium at home prevent atrial fibrillation? Well, the evidence is mixed. Some small studies suggest it might reduce early triggers, like premature beats, but large, high-quality studies are lacking. If you're low in magnesium, it does make sense to correct that, but taking high doses when you're not deficient hasn't been proven to prevent atrial fibrillation, and it actually can cause side effects. Now, on to potassium. It's another important electrolyte. Low potassium, called hypokalemia, is known to increase atrial fibrillation risk. But again, supplementing potassium without a deficiency is not a proven prevention strategy. And too much potassium can actually be dangerous, especially if you have kidney problems. So always check your levels and talk to your doctor before starting anything. Next, vitamin C. Now this one is interesting. It's not an electrolyte like potassium or magnesium, but it is a powerful antioxidant. Atrial fibrillation is linked to inflammation and oxidative stress in the walls of your heart. So some studies have looked at vitamin C for prevention, especially after heart surgery. Now, there are some small studies that suggest it might be helpful in that specific situation, but for general, long-term atrial fibrillation prevention, the evidence just isn't there yet. So here's the bottom line. If you're deficient in magnesium or potassium, fixing that is smart and it might reduce your atrial fibrillation risk. If you've just had heart surgery, vitamin C might help reduce inflammation short term. But for most people, taking these supplements without a deficiency won't prevent atrial fibrillation. And in some cases, it could even be harmful. Instead, focus on the things we know reduce risk. A whole food diet, exercise, managing sleep apnea, cutting back on the alcohol, controlling stress. If you're dealing with atrial fibrillation and you want more clarity about your options beyond just the pills or procedures, I offer second opinion consults and deep dive evaluations. Check out the link in the description if that interests you. Thank you for watching and take care of your heart.